pick perfect. All right, we have here today the first three alkali metals. What are the first three alkali metals? Lithium. 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 Sodium. 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 They're the same family, aren't they? Mm -hmm. They're placed in the same family because they react similarly to each other. Why do they react similarly to each other? Speak up, please. Same what? Group. Uh, it's not because they're in the same group, it's because the same number of what electrons? One. Valence electrons. They have the same dot picture too, don't they? Um, and as we go down that group, doesn't the radius of the atom increase? Now, they all have one valence electron. If they were somehow able to lose that one valence electron, so for instance, if lithium were somehow able to get rid of it, wouldn't it have an electron configuration identical to helium's? A noble gas configuration. And sodium, identical to argon. And potassium would be, or sorry, sodium identical to neon. Potassiums would be identical to argon. All noble gas configurations, which is a very, very stable configuration. So if there's some way where we can get these alkali metals to get rid of that electron, it would certainly make a stable configuration. And we can do that by adding them to water. They actually would do it in the air, but in water, you guys read in your book, it happens faster, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Which ones do you think it would happen fastest with, and why? Mm -hmm. Lithium, sodium, or potassium? Mm -hmm. I heard sodium, but I also heard more potassiums. Why potassiums? What's that? No. Very good. The radius of potassium is the biggest dist of them all, isn't it? The electron is trying to quote unquote lose is farthest away from the nucleus. Won't that be the easiest one to lose then? Yep. All right. Well, let's take a look at these with that in mind. Our first alkali metal is lithium. And you will notice that it's a nice soft metal, as are all the alkali metals. And we'll get a sample of it here. We keep the alkali metals stored under mineral oil to protect them from the air because if they get exposed to the air, they react, they do their form of rusting, they become oxidized. It doesn't look orangish like rust does on iron. It's, lithium happens to have a gray uh, oxide coating. But I can slice these with a knife. So I'll take my knife and I'll slice through, whoops, slice through the lithium. And uh, you'll see it's a pretty soft metal. And when I do, you can see the luster of the metal underneath once I remove that oxide coating. Now, this small piece of lithium that I've just cut away, I'm going to ahead and add to my water. To the water, I'm going to add some phenolphthalein. It's an indicator, and it indicates the presence of hydroxide ions. Now, you don't know what those are yet, but it turns pink in the presence of hydroxides, and you guys read in your book that alkali metals, when they react with water, produce hydroxides. So, right now, we can see uh, we don't see the presence of hydroxides in my water, but after I add the lithium, it turns pink, we know they're there. So I'll go ahead and I'll add the lithium to water. And uh, you can see that we have a pink color, showing the presence of my hydroxides being formed. And actually, if you can look down on it, it's starting to fizz and bubble. Lithium metal reacts with water. Yeah, in the back you can see it, you can even hear it, can't you? Okay, so that's lithium metal. The next of my alkali metals that I'll do for you is sodium. And we'll do the same thing with sodium. A beaker full of water, and we'll add a couple drops of my indicator. And we will take a look at our sodium metal, and it will have an oxide coating. Sodium's oxide coating is maybe a bit lighter in color than we saw with the lithium. Nevertheless, when I cut it away, it's by the way, it's softer than lithium. Whoops. Let's try another piece here. When I cut it away, you can see the luster, once again, of the metal below the oxide coating. Now, this time, I'm actually going to uh, put the watch glass over top of the beaker when I add it, because um, this will react a bit more vigorously, as we predicted than the lithium because that electron that's being removed is farther away. It will be removed more easily and therefore react faster. So you can see the sodium metal 
it actually melts, this reaction is exothermic, and you can see it actually forms a sphere on the surface, and it skims along and reacts faster than the, the lithium. Uh, the smoke that you see is from the mineral oil being burned off during the reaction. Okay. The last alkali metal that we'll look at here in class, we'll actually look at two others um, on a little film clip, will be uh, potassium. And we'll see if I can get a piece out of this jar. This is the softest of the three. And I'll slice into that. And the luster of the metal below, it's tough to see. It does oxidize pretty quickly, but uh, you can see the shininess of the luster of the metal below for a moment. And we'll go ahead and we'll add this to water, and we expect this to react even faster. And so for that reason, we'll have the watch glass over top of it, and we may even see this burst into flames if we're lucky, right? So here's our potassium metal in water. Uh, relatively the same mass of each metal through the demonstration. The lithium took quite a while to react. The potassium, that same mass, reacted pretty quickly, didn't it? It was almost over before it started. At any rate, the important point is that all three metals reacted in the same way with water, and we were able to predict the relative rates at which they reacted as we moved down the group. Okay? That'll work, Carl. Thanks.